Yo, yo. We are back. Another day in the lab. It's episode 32 of the Wrap Up Podcast. Steph, how you feeling, brother? Feeling good, man. How about yourself, bro? I'm hanging in there, man. No complaints on my end. You know, just trying to make it through these work weeks. It's, it's been a little hectic, but I'm, I'm hitting that. the top job. I hear that. Yeah. Anybody with a nine to five, they know the trials and tribulations. Right. <laughs> like, uh, like, like Kanye said, man. The greatest shit, it's like slave shit. For real. <laughs> That's how they got you feeling sometimes, man. But hey, I'm gonna take you count me blessed. So. Ah, man, we had a very eventful week. Um, finally had some football jump back off. I was excited about that. Uh, so Thursday night kicked off the opener with the Bears versus the Packers. Didn't quite go our way. No, um, it didn't. It did. The defense looks good, man. The defense, the defense is as advertised. As the advertised. Boys came out there tough. Yeah, man, they came out there tough. They looked really good against an elite quarterback. Um, it's just the other side of the ball. The offensive side of the ball for Chicago did not quite pull through. I was hoping that we were going to be able to see um, another step forward from Mitch Trubisky. Not saying yeah. that we're not going to see it. It's only been one game. But um, I think this is where the preseason comes into play. I think he needed some preseason snaps, some, something to, to show that he's fresh and, you know, got his legs under him. This first game, uh, he, looked, he looked out of whack. Looked if anybody needed short. preseason work, he did. If Tom yeah, Brady yeah. got two games, what makes you think Mitch only needed one? Right. Yeah, man. So I, I'm. I, that's one thing that I didn't like. But we got a um, we got a, a another matchup coming up. We got uh, who is it? Denver, Denver. coming up next. Yeah, Denver. that's a tough matchup. That is a you tough know, matchup. You're gonna, you're gonna be facing an even tougher defense and a great pass rush. So, so they better be ready. They, they definitely better be coming ready with it. But uh, aside from that, we also got to see. What these actionable items were from Jay-Z. <laughs> our our first nation. foray. <laughs> Man. Or at least this is the first case. So, I guess, man, it is, it's kind of hard to say what I want to say and, and, and still be diplomatic. Go ahead and get that we, out, man. Get that off your chest. If, if, we, if we go back, <laughs> man. If we go back to episode 31, I vividly said, I, I, I distinctly remember myself saying, self, what we don't want to see <laughs> is a song in some damn t-shirt. That's right. That's right. You, you come you, to find out, we getting a song <laughs> in some goddamn t-shirt. <laughs> Nigger Thomas. <laughs> Yo, so so it came out later this week that um, it's going to be uh, a new song with uh, who is who's on it? Jay, Jay Rhapsody, uh, yeah. Me. Um, is is that the one with uh, Megan Trainor? I, I think it's yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I think Vic Mensa. How you pull out Megan Trainor? I don't know. <laughs> I, I I do not know. And what and you pull, you pull Rhapsody it's, in because she already got that. That's already her niche. Right, because she got the, <laughs> right, because she got the buzz right now, you know. And it, I don't, I, I that and the fact that they're going to have uh, um, an, an apparel line that's coming uh -huh. along with it. Apparel. Um, What's that? They're going to have some gear. Uh, oh, apparel. Uh, apparel. Yeah, 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 yeah. So some, some apparel. And um, I, I don't know, man. It just feels like the same old, same old. So hey, it's man. Like you, you're not, you ain't doing nothing different than what Cap did. Just that he not, he not doing, uh, you know, Cap wasn't making no songs because he played football, so he demonstrated through football. You know my acumen, man. Gear. I did not call yeah, it. So, so Jay-Z <laughs> talking about something, oh, we're going to do something different. You come out with a song, which is what you do, which is equivalent to kneeling, in my uh, opinion, mm -hmm. and you come out with some clothes. Yeah, Cap did that already. Yeah, and I don't even and think Cap giving, Nike stuff you're not sold. Giving me anything. Did Cap Nike stuff it, sell it, anywhere? Because um, I didn't I see it. The Nike stuff. I don't know if the Nike stuff really sold, but his own shirts were selling with the fist and then like the uh, the black Kaepernick jerseys. Those was uh, those was doing well, but those those weren't by Nike. Those was just his own. Okay, because I couldn't uh, tell you where to find it. 
Yeah. So, I mean, I, I just don't see anything different. Um, the $400,000 that he did to, um, that he gave to like the Boys and Girls Club of Chicago, I thought that was dope. Who? Who, uh, gave, who with, gave that? Uh, Rock Nation. $400? So, uh, 400000 400,000. To, to what? To one or multiple? Um, I believe it was one. Let me do a little research real quick. Um, and but I know that they were in Chicago. Well, Meek did the performance in front of, um, Buckingham Fountain. But then Rhapsody and Vic Mensa and Meek did like a, um, a meet and greet, uh, something oh, like that. That was publicized then because I didn't know nothing about that part. And I'm in Chicago. Yeah, so I mean, so that that part I like, um, you know. So they probably gave but, it to the to the charter in Chicago to disperse how they uh, feel. Yeah, so and I just I don't know. So it's um they they donated four hundred thousand to the uh, the Better Boys Foundation and uh, the Crushers Club. That's what it is, the Crushers Club. Um, that's the the youth mission that they do to. Um, I think it's, I think Vic Mensa is a part of Crusher's Club, but I know um, it's like to help out young boys and improve the neighborhoods and stuff. It, it, it's a, it's a it's a dope charity to give to, but I just wanted to do more. That's an odd I wanted number. More. They could make it five. I I don't know. <laughs> yeah, how they settled on four hundred thousand, I have no clue. But um, I know Rhapsody and Vic Mensa did uh, an appearance. Um. But he, I'm going to continue to go back to actionable items. So because I'm figuring that the way that the whole setup was that you're going to take this next level, or at least that's what I got of it, got out of it. And I'm not seeing that this is next level. To me, you're just continuing to do the same thing that Kaepernick did. You know, his mm -hmm. his um his way of using his platform was to be able to go out and do his thing on the field. So he knelt during the national anthem on the field. Jay-Z's platform is music. So you made a song and then you did apparel uh, an apparel line. And to me, those are two things. Those are, that's exactly what Cap was doing. When you say actionable items and we're beyond kneeling, I expected you to come and do something bigger, something broader, something more eventful, something more relevant that would relate back to the cause. And I'm not saying that he's done. Maybe this is just the beginning. But for you to start off and do the same thing, or at least not, not the same thing, but to me this is equivalent to what Cap was doing. Yeah, not even, so in, not even no, an extension. Yeah, you, you, you run in the same pace. So I don't, I don't understand how you can go off and say what you said um and continue to do the same. I'm I'm so the first actionable item from Jay Z, I'm actually a little disappointed. I'm disappointed by that. Um, I just don't to me you're not doing anything different. I didn't see anything that made me feel like, okay, I feel like you can take this to the next step or the next level, uh, because of what you're showing me now. I don't I don't see that. To me, you gave me the exact same thing that we was getting before. So yeah, man, it, this was a uh, this was a little rough for me. And and that's the thing when I told you uh, last week on our last week's show, I said by him saying we're away from that, it, it, he's he's in a box now because everything you do now has to be seen as ten times more than what Cap was doing, and giving me a concert yeah. in front of uh, Buckingham Fountain. And the, and the song you choose is Dreams and Nightmares. Like, come on now. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> I, mean it's, it's, I don't know, man. I just wanted more. I didn't get, I didn't get enough. And again, it's not like all is. It's just everything is all over with just because of this one thing. But I just, I wanted, I expected to have more, and I didn't get it. I expected it, I expected this to be a bigger movement and a bigger piece of what you was getting ready to bring uh, towards social reform and social injustice. And I didn't get none of that. Well, if you I was, gave I was just, me what we already dream. had. Just tape of that dream and realize it is what it is. Um, 
it is sad to say, but what we stated may be legit. The money grab, and I give him, like, he's pacifying. And if the people don't say anything about it, it's going to continue. And I haven't heard anybody say anything, you know, nationally, other than the um, the the few that I follow that are more closely vested to home as opposed to like celebrities I follow. Nobody else has said anything about it. So yeah. tomato, tomato, live to see another day, hopefully. Yeah, that's, man, that, that's what he uh, on. And, and like I said, it's early in the season. So it's not like he can't continue to do more. But even if you decided to do this, you know, once every week, of the NFL season. To me, that's still not enough. Uh-uh. It, it's you. It's the exact same thing over and over. It's the... He not had, saying he, that... Go he, ahead. He had the opportunity, man, being in Chicago with the... I hate to say the violence that we have, but it's it's nationwide. But the issues yeah. that, that we have um, here in Chicago, he had a big opportunity to capitalize on whatever his initiative or his motive was. And I believe he dropped the ball and I don't want to say he, yeah, let's call a spade a spade. He dropped the ball and did the norm. And, and what he Mm -hmm. did was the norm. He did a, we are not even a, we are the world. He did a track. Now I'm not saying he, but Meek Mill, he told Meek Mill to get up there and do a track. It was a little mini concert. When they called out Meek Mill, a uh, rapper, Grammy nominated rapper and social reformist Meek Mill, I chuckled and I sent you the uh, and I sent the text. You like they call this man a social reformist. Yeah. And then he get up there and sing Dreams and Nightmares. Dreams and Nightmares. And, and he nigged it out the whole time. So bleeps, you couldn't even know what he was saying. Yeah, I mean, and it's. And what about but Dreams and Nightmares? Thing. Give me something new. Give me, give me a social reform song. Something he could have did ambition, you know, something. <laughs> yeah. He could have did something different than Dreams and Nightmares, man. I get what right. you were saying. I, mean, I know I know that's your most popular song. It gets you in, it's ready for football. You know, I'm not knocking the song. I yeah. like the song. But if the me if the reason you're there and the reason you're performing is to give uh shed a light on social injustice and to be a part of this social reform. You're a super creative dude. You got time to go ahead and write a, write a song, lay a song, and, and and have it ready for this huge event. He only so needs thirty six bars. Be, <laughs> Give me two sixteen. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, yo, I just it's disappointing though. Thirty two bars. Whole total overall, it is it, just a very disappointing event. Not that the there's nothing wrong with what they did. It's the fact that you set it up that this was going to be something more and something different, mm-hmm. and it's not. That that's the part I'm mostly, um, you know, upset about. Is you know when you give us, it's, it's almost like you know you get you got great previews to a terrible movie. You know that's yeah. that's, that's basically what it is for me. It's like oh you set this up that it's supposed to be the biggest thing since sliced bread. You gonna come through. And you doing everything, and you about to kill the game with what you're delivering, and it's terrible, or not even necessarily terrible. It's lackluster. You, you're not, you're not, you're not coming through on your word. It you comes know, off as lazy. To I'm going very lazy and predictable. Mm-hmm. You, he came off lazy, predictable, and extremely cliche. You haven't given us anything different than what Kaepernick was doing. And, it, and again, I don't think. He purposely denounced what Kaepernick was doing. But when you say we're beyond kneeling and yet you give us something equivalent to that, you gave us a song. And it, 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 I take that back. You didn't even give us a song. That's right. I'm about you to say how the song been released yet. It's, it's, not, <laughs> no, it's nothing new. This song ain't new. You didn't give us a song. He just performed. Me, me going to do that every day anyway. So it, it's uh, yeah, man. Disappointed is, um, it's not even a word. I don't, I don't, I don't know of a better acronym. But it's yeah, it, it it just wasn't enough for me. It was far from enough. 
So I'm hoping that he got something else in the tuck or something else under his sleeve. Uh, uh, because this this can't be the end all be all. You just doing concerts and giving you know money to the boys and girls club, you know here and there, and uh, you know selling a couple t shirts and hats. I mean that's cool, but if that's all you gonna do, then say that you know what this deal with Rock Nation is to continue the initiative that Kaepernick Set forth, started. Yeah. Not to say mm-hmm. that. Not to say that you're going to take the reins and move forward. Because you're not moving forward. You're just doing exactly what you was doing already. It's nothing new. It's nothing it's new. Absolutely you're absolutely right. nothing new. You're right. So, so it's that, that, that part is, um, is a little rough, man. That part is a little tough for me. But I'm hoping that we can continue to press forward in the matter. But I can't. But after after this, I can't necessarily say that I'm expecting anything different or anything bigger. Mm-hmm. My expectations have largely been tapered off now because of what I saw today. To me, I, he didn't give me anything that made me think like, okay, Jay Z can take this to the next level for us. Yeah, I agree. You know what? It's a perfect example. Is this nigga's Mitch Trubisky? Jay Z is Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> you giving me the same. <laughs> This is the same Mitch that we saw last year. Oh, man. He is Mitch Trubisky. You ain't doing nothing different. This is exactly the same. Jay-Z doing the same thing that we saw Kaepernick do. And I saw, I, all I heard was promises. I heard promises in the offseason that we were going to see a new development out of Mitch and then he's going to take it to the next level and he's going to do what Patrick Mahomes did last year and, and you know, we're going to see a next step forward and I ain't seeing that. Man. Nigga, you're giving me the same thing. <laughs> what you see is what you get. <laughs> is what you get. <laughs> like, That's all oh, it is, man, man, bro. That's all it is. It's bad. I tried to it's I tried sad. to taper back your 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 spirit and it bring you back to reality. You did? I tried to, because you know I know people. <laughs> I don't know Jay Z, but I know enough of them to know what yeah. was gonna happen with this. Um and I'm not patting myself on the back or on the shoulder or anything like that because it was just one week. We don't know. Next um, tomorrow, Sunday is the big the opening for everybody. So it may be a, a bigger initiative then, but you had the nation focusing on one game with two charter members. This was the day you come yeah. out with a bang on national TV. Exactly. And here's the thing is I am a man of my word. If he comes with it and he shows something that, you know, like that's that's a really – great movement, something that's thought provoking and that's going to move the people, I will easily eat crow. I will fall on my sword and be like, you know what, Jay came with it. And and I will recant these statements. But right now, these are warranted. I have every right to feel the way that you I do. do you absolutely because do. Because he isn't doing anything different than what Kaepernick did. So it, it's, it's as man, right now, I, it's, it's easy to be disappointed. I feel like um, he let us down in regards to what he had the ability to do and then what he ultimately provided. Yeah, so I agree. It's, it's, um, it's flat. It's very flat. And so it's, it's, it leaves a lot to be desired in terms of what I'd like to see moving forward from social reform and social injustice and him being able to utilize his platform to the fullest. I know how powerful the shield is, meaning the NFL, and I know how lucrative of a deal this can become and how um, lucrative of a uh, partnership this can be for him and anybody in the years moving forward. But you also have to understand that you stepped into this realm even before – um, you got this deal and you knew what you was dealing with, you know, and you knew what you had to do. So by the time that this deal was signed, you had to have known that all eyes was going to be on you. Jay-Z not just uh, some random guy. He's a smart dude. He's a businessman. But you He's overlook, been telling us that for years. You overlook a lot of wrong based on who's doing the wrong. You know, Jay-Z, this is true. Jay-Z is Jay-Z. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
I guarantee you no one thought about Meek Mill. Well, I wouldn't say no one, but the, the public at large, the masses, the black community didn't really think anything about social initi initiative when they saw Meek Mill out there. Because that's no. how that's how quickly we come off of the social initiative point. You know what I mean? Because we haven't heard Jay-Z hasn't spoken about this since the Goodell drop. You know, he's been saying certain things here and now. And I think I sent you a clip where he was making no sense at all trying to uh, talk about why he wouldn't um, invest in, in, in Marcy and things of that nature. So to me, he's just a beat around yeah, the bush it. talker. You know, he just... He just talks around. If it if it don't make money, it don't make sense with a TS behind it. It it, it don't. Yeah. It, it it that's that's what I feel his motivation is. That's what I feel his his goal is. If he can help whom he can help in terms of his close core, he's willing to do that. But the public at large, you know, I don't I don't get that that sense. I don't get that that vibe you know he could have did he could have went to chicago state that's a black university in chicago you know yep. and did something you know it's a lot of things he could have did they could have went down to bronzeville and you know took a look at the community and, hey let's invest in the bronzeville project and it's it was it's a lot of things he can do other than what i stated build schools i mean not build schools refurbish fields which i equate to giving to the boys and girls club as building fields mm -hmm. And anything else that he's designed within his program, I don't see it. I don't see it. Now, there's one more phase that we haven't seen yet, and that's the uh, the programming. But that's, I'm pretty sure, just going to be docs or, you know, NFL players going back home and building houses or something like that. Who knows? I don't know. I'm just talking off yeah. the cuff right now. But I don't, in a year, a year from now, after this season, the initiative, I believe, is over with. I think this is a one-year test trial, let's see, maybe six months. I don't even think we make it to a, a four-calendar year, especially not a season. I really do. Yeah, I mean, and again, that I I wouldn't be surprised. It, it makes sense. Unlike it my man sense, Adam man. Silva, who's doing it correctly with the NBA, they need to take books and yeah, notes from sure. that. Jay Z need to go talk to LeBron, and you know I'm not a LeBron fan in terms of uh, the way he handles himself on the court, but off the court, I, LeBron does no wrong for me. Some of the stuff is corny, but when it comes to the people and the public, I, I have a sincerity. I see a sincerity, if you will, from LeBron, Chris Paul, and Bello, and um, you know Igladala and and all those other boys, or men over there, I should say. I see sincerity in them. I see sincerity in Reed and what uh, Kenny Stills was doing. I haven't yeah. sensed the sincerity in Jay Z as of yet. Yeah, and, I mean, and again, it's, I, I don't want to. Yeah, I do. I was about to say I don't want to beat up on him, but yeah, I do because. The picture that you painted, the picture that you described to us in that meeting with Roger Goodell was as if you were coming with something different, that you were about to establish something special with this partnership with the NFL. But if that's the case, then you have to understand that every move that you make from here on out, is there's not going to be a middle and ground. Either you're going to be applauded or you're going to be scrutinized. One of the two. And as of right now, you're going to be scrutinized with this first move that we saw. The $400 going back to the, uh, to the Boys Club and uh, the Crushers Club of Chicago, that's great. You can always invest money back into your youth. I'm good with that. But Meek Mill performing Dreams and Nightmares, a song that we've already heard a million times, that doesn't that that didn't scream social reform at all. It's just it's just somebody performing right before, you know, the kickoff of the NFL season. If it was a song that was specifically speaking back to social reform, if it was something new, if Meek was talking about, you know, the the, the social injustices that he just faced. That's not what Dreams and Nightmares is about. No, not at all. That would have that may have moved us a little different. But that's not what you gave us. And it's definitely not what you depicted 
um, and what you described to us in this meeting with Roger Goodell. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, man, I'm disappointed. It's early, so he has a chance to bounce back, just like Mr. Trubisky. That's, from now on, Jay-Z is Mr. Trubisky until he can show me something different. And don't let, don't let Mitch mess around and show me something new uh, week two against Denver. <laughs> then we're going to have to come up with a new name for this dude. For real. Because then Mitch going to be the redeemed himself, and Jay-Z still over here throwing concerts and barbecues. At, at, at Washington Park. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm tired of this, man. Come on, dog. Oh, man. You could have gave me something better than this. Handing out turkeys you in gave November. me something better. Right, man. Come on, bro. That's, it, that's unfortunate. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is right now, man. Only thing we can do is hope that we get more as we move forward. Yeah, we'll, we'll, um, we'll, we'll talk about phase two next week. Oh, we gonna have to. We gonna have to because he gotta. He gotta continue to uh, to show me something. A weekly segment because if not, until I get you to realize that Jay-Z <laughs> to do nothing. That's gonna be our weekly check in. Aaron <laughs> and his Jay Z thoughts. Right, we gotta wash our hands. <laughs> right <laughs> until eventually I wash my hands of this nigga. <laughs> For real. Um, well, so a Sarga heads came on the radio yesterday. Um, I think it was get your hands up with beans, and um, I think it was. I think that was it. But it was a, uh-huh. a Jay Z track. And and that's my yeah. joint. I, I, I turned from it, man. I told turned you I'm, off, I'm off of them, man. I turned from oh, it. Man. And it hurt me, too. I dig it. But I can't do I it. I dig it. My man sus right now to me. Yeah, it's, you got every right to feel like that, man. With, with the way that he set this whole thing up. And this first one is a swing and a miss. A swing and a miss for me. But um, I did want to talk about one other thing, man. Uh, it, you know, you actually just put me up on this, is um, the flag that Jamel Hill is getting. Uh, yesterday, she said that she thinks that all black athletes should leave white colleges and go to uh, HBCU, uh, start to go back to uh, black colleges. Mm-hmm. Now... Taking a look, at least what I've read on it thus far, is I can see I can see her wheel spinning. I don't think she articulated this very well. I don't think she articulated what she was trying to say very well. I'm I'm a Jamil Hill fan. I've I've always liked her. I like uh, the fact that she's outspoken. I like the fact that uh, nine times out of ten, when it's sports related, she knows what she's talking about. Um, so I've, I've usually been in agreement with Jamel Hill. And I'm not saying that I'm not in agreement with more black athletes, prominent black athletes, going to HBCU. But I don't like the way that she just depicted it as just white college. Because it's not just that. It is white colleges that they're going to. But you can say more um, prestigious sports schools. She turned this into a black versus white thing. And she went to Michigan State. Right. (laughs) Of all places, she went to Michigan State, another prominent sports school. But the way in which she phrased this is she made it a black versus white school thing. And really, it's a put more back into yourself type thing. Absolutely. And, put and, more black into black colleges. And there's nothing wrong with that. And, so and, and that's what I think. It, and that's what I'm sorry. And, mm-hmm. and that's what I think the clap back is from um, white America. That's the backlash now is she's speaking of um, what was the word they use? Um, desegregation. That is yeah. so it's kind of bordering that line which i do understand but i understand what she was trying to convey as well um it's a full article that she wrote and it's in the um atlantic so if anybody want to go out there and, and read it it's in from the atlantic and she actually wrote it if you go somewhere else of course you know they're just going to give you the hot topics right, the hot blurbs that's, yeah. that's going to be misconstrued mm-hmm. but I, but I advise you all to go ahead and read the actual um the actual um editorial is is pretty lengthy i haven't gotten through all of it i got through a, um 
a good portion to get an idea of what was going on. So I won't weigh too heavily on it. But I understand what she's saying if she's mentioning to divest in pretty much a culture being the NCAA that is only looking to monetize off your athleticism. And when you're hurt or when it's over with, you're done. As opposed to going to these HBCUs and placing that monetary quote-unquote value there as opposed to into the white schools I get that but then on top of all of that I understand the standpoint of even a black athlete or a former black athlete that says well my diploma that reads University of Florida or um, Florida State University carries more weight than Bethune-Cookman or Florida A&M you see what I'm saying Mm -hmm. So I see that same principle as well. So what are we talking about? Are we talking about the education or are we talking about the sports dollars? That's the part that I have to yeah. decipher through the article. That's, I feel you. But even still, what I really think, I mean, because let's if we think about it, the two are still hand in hand. They are. Both the education and the uh, I'm sorry, and the athletic part of it, because here's what you got. It's it's no, it's this is proven fact. I think you can say that if you look at any sport other than um, uh, hockey, but minorities obviously outnumber white America in the three major sports in America. Yes, basketball, football, and baseball. Minorities completely outnumber them, not even close. So here's the thing is you're going to have, if you start to get more of these four and five star athletes to go to HBCUs, the networks and everybody is going, they're going to want to watch the best players in sports. That was my right? next point. That was my so next they, point. Will they get the networks to go see uh, a Bethune Cookman and a, um, uh, and I'm drawing a blank right now. A Bethune Cookman and 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 a Tuskegee. Will ABC or ESPN say, "Hey, let's go highlight that game in a school gym," as opposed to you still having a three-star athlete deciding to go to North Carolina and now that Division One or that FBC, um, the FBS, I mean FCS, uh, BCS. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Division schools basketball and football are now more competitive because they're even because they have an even amount of talent. Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, if you take a look at it and you look at the, the top five, you know, five-star running back in, in the nation right now, they all black, right? Yeah. So let's say all of them go to an HBCU then you're going to start having those games on ESPN and ESPN2 and ESPN use those people. They gonna, the Thorne Cushman going to be on TV a lot more often. Hampton and Howard University going to be on TV. Tuskegee mm -hmm. going to be on TV. Florida a and uh, Florida, uh, FAMU is going to be on TV. But they lose you know? a lot of so benefits, then, that, though. A lot of benefits are lost in terms of, I would say, the preparation for the NFL, the scheduling, the... Um the uh, going to particular environments, the practice facilities, the training facilities, the doctors, they're okay. going to take a step back That's when the, they go there. In the beginning, absolutely. In the beginning, you will. But once you start getting these network TV ratings and once you start getting these boosters and once you start getting the the, uh, the apparel back and all of this and, and, and you, you driving money and the revenue from what these kids are wearing, that's when that's when you start to get better training facilities and you start to get better medical staff and you start to get better professors and you start to get better, um, uh, you know, housing facilities and units for these kids. So then eventually, four or five years from now, and you go to a FAMU and you take a look and you're like, man, you know what? They got a Duke-level training facility here. They got a... a, 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 a you know, uh, uh, USC uh, level um, training facility and, and courses. Yeah, I, can, I have a, a top-notch level professor here 
as I would at Penn State. And, and you know, because they now do the have the revenue that. is coming in from sports. They do have that in terms of professors. Now I'll give them that. But the one thing that mm-hmm. the that the the big school, if you will, the white school, as she stated, has over the black community or the black institutions is the effect of legacy money. Meaning the black institutions, they have legacies, they have alumni that give back, but you're not getting that same dollar, you know, that a yeah. Duke or Northwestern or UCLA or Cal Berkeley or uh, uh, um, Ohio State or uh, um, Syracuse, that legacy money is way, right. is way bigger. And even if we get these athletes to come to these particular institutions, they can only give back so much. No athlete now that's going to Virginia Tech, or and I'm just naming uh, big schools off the top of my head, mm-hmm. and schools like that, they're not giving big endowments back. They may give a, a meal of 500000 so the athlete isn't giving that money back. That money, yes, is coming through the sponsorships from the apparel, but a lot of that is legacy money because I want to see my name on the library or I want my school to be the best. You know, Bill Gates may donate. He didn't even go to college, but he may want to donate over to Washington because that's where he lived. Um, Steve Ballmer may want to donate to his alma mater. You know, Bill Cosby was donating to Temple. You know, so those are the things, but he also donated there as well. But I'm pretty sure the endowment wasn't as much as Temple because that's he's an alumnus. You know what I mean? So the alumni, I believe, has to reach back into these schools to invest. There are a lot of millionaires that have come from HBCUs. And I'm not going to say they're not giving money, but it's that legacy dollar that goes into that endowment the same as far as on that particular level as it is going to uh, a high major or mid-major school. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. That's a good point. When you talk about boosters and legacy money, you, you're you absolutely right. The legacy money is long. Um, Happy total set on blue a lot chips. Of these, uh, yeah. But the, how do HBCUs start to make their legacy money long. This is the way. This is the only way. This this is the way. I think Jamel Hill, actually, her idea is right. I think it's smart. She just went about it the wrong way. She articulated the message in a poor manner because she made it black schools versus white schools. And really, it's not black schools versus white schools. It's black schools Black kids need to go back to black schools so they can invest back in the black community. That's the real message. It's not, oh, don't go give your money to a white school, give your money to a black school. And it's like, what? No, that's not what it's about. It's about empowering and giving back to your own so you can continue to develop your own. You want to continue to circulate the black dollar back into the black community and give back to more black people. This has nothing to do with um, trying to stick it to the white man and stick it to the white man's school. That's not that. It's saying, hey, you know what? Why wouldn't I just give back to my own people? That's the way that she should have articulated her message. That's the reason why she's receiving a backlash. This should have never been a black school versus white school thing. I agree. Because as soon as you do that, you skew what the original message is, which is let's continue to have our black people be back circulate the dollar in the black community. It doesn't mean that you have to segregate because white people, it's more white people starting to go to HBCUs now. So it's not an exclusion thing. That's right. They playing quarterback. It, 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 right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, so it, it's, that's, that's the point that I really want to get to is that I agree with Jamel Hill. I just don't agree with the way that she went about saying it. Yeah, I agree. It was, it, the message is clear. And I like, maybe, again, maybe, I, I didn't read the entire article, so maybe they blew some things out of proportion. Um, so I, I'm, I'm almost positive that's the way that she wants to depict this in the article, and it just didn't come out right. Uh, as soon as you say white school, and then you have black schools, yes, those schools are predominantly white, but I, you can't classify them as just a white school. 
even though they are an upper echelon institution and you have a majority of white people going there and the blacks that you do have going there typically are on athletic scholarships. By no means am I saying that they're not capable of academic scholarships. Shoot, because, you know, I've been looking at as many news stories as I've seen lately with all of these uh, these black kids going to these upper echelon institutions and Ivy League schools where they're getting uh, 10 and 15 um, full-ride academic scholarships. It's not that we're not capable. We're more than capable. You just have to be careful in which the way we project the narrative. And I think that's the only thing that she did that was a little incorrect. And and, and I would have even taken, you know me, I, I kind of go too deep into the lines, but I would have even held the article more credence if it was coming from mm -hmm. um, a Michael Smith or uh, uh, or Stephen A. Smith who went to an HBCU. You didn't even go to one. Yeah. You know, and if you're yes, talking sir. about journalism, yes, I'm pretty sure there's I, I'm not the advocate for that or the um, the, the known. But I'm pretty sure there are some schools like Florida A&T is a pretty good school for um, for communications. So I'm pretty sure there there's an equivalent of Syracuse within the HBCU community. Why did you choose to go yeah. to Michigan State? Is it because of the name that's going to be written across the diploma? Because you could have mm -hmm. easily have gone to uh, Prairie View or Mississippi Valley if that's the case, and and and, yeah. and 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 that's just me maybe thinking too deep. But you know how my mind work, bro. But that's how I normally see things. You can't say what someone should do, and you didn't do it. Now, it, now, if you said in hindsight, I wish I would have gone to an HBCU. But Michigan State afforded you the career that you have. You know, so who's to say if you were to go, and I'm not knocking, if you were to go to a Bethune-Cookman, you would have that same career or the same career arc. Because the name True. on the diploma, yeah. I'm sorry, it does hold weight. If you have two um, interviewers, I mean interviewees, and one went to Notre Dame and the other one went to my alumni, alma mater, love it to death, Columbia, you, I mean, Columbia College in Chicago, who you think is going to get mm -hmm. the job most likely if I don't have more of intern or industry experience? It's probably going to go to the cat from Notre Dame, just, just being honest. Yeah. Because of the name on the certificate, if you will, the name on the diploma. So that name carries That's weight. And for the, and the tie back to the black athlete, Exposure is a big thing if you have pro aspirations, no matter if that's overseas or here at home. That's and you're absolutely right. And 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 the and we I know we've been using the word legacy, but the relationship that networks have with these particular schools now with the ACC network, SEC network, uh, the Big Ten network, all being affiliated with Fox and ESPN. Those are gaps that are seen all across their platforms, not just football and basketball. Now you have a specific network for those athletes that are black, that plays tennis, that play golf. So they now have exposure that they didn't even have in the white schools now. So the benefit of going to, I, I say go to the best school that you can and get the most exposure that you can for whatever industry that you're in. If you're able to get the exposure that you want in the HBCU, by all means. But if what you want to do, you have to go the route of USC, UCLA, you have to go to California, go to California and do what you need to do in order for you to be successful and your family to be successful. Now, that doesn't mean once you get your money, you can't go back to Florida and say, hey, Bethune Cookman, I know I didn't go to school here, but I want to give you something for your... Um, for your theater program or for your arts program, that can still be done. Yeah, because they're not going to say no. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, you didn't go here. No, they're not going to say no. You know, so I think, yeah. I think it was blown out of proportion. I think she articulated the way that she wanted to. Uh, I'm kind of over giving people the benefit of the doubt now because people are saying what they want to say and they mean what they're saying. <laughs> so, yeah. so, yeah. it, so, so it is. It, it is. She got a point across. That's what she wanted to say. But you didn't go to one. So, 
how can you tell someone else not to go? Yeah. And you know? it's, it, it, I, I, again, I think we really just have to look at the way in which it was, it was articulated. Uh-huh. Um, but ultimately, I'm still in an, in an agreement with a lot of what she said. Yeah. But again, what you're saying is, that, you know, this would be a lot more easy to digest if she actually went to an HBCU. You know, um, the fact, and it, it's no knock that she she went to uh, Michigan State. You know, again, that afforded her a great career in journalism thus far. I think she's a fantastic journalist. I think she, she's great at what she does. Um, this particular situation may not have been her best in which she articulated herself. And, and you know, sometimes we, I, get, we get caught up in our own pro-whatever-it-is, in this case, our own pro-blackness, where you can start something one way and then it manifests and turn into something else. And I believe that's this is what's happening with this article. She had a thought. She shared the thought. But then, you know, you just keep talking or you keep writing. And then other things come out. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It just turned into more. Yeah, it kind of snowballed. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it just it turned into something maybe a little more than what it had to be. It doesn't take much. It don't take much for people to take what you say and twist it or run with one part of it. Because I can guarantee you that a majority of what she said probably was very well written, very well thought out. But they saw white schools versus black schools. And then they took that part and said, oh, no, we're going to crucify her for this crap. You know, and then that's kind of what we're getting now. And she already so, has, a, has a stigma. Yeah, as being the angry black woman in journalism. <laughs> Absolutely, that's that's definitely the stigma that they they are, um, you know, kind of painting her as. And I don't think that's necessarily all that fair either, because she offers so much more and she delivers so much more in the world of sports and um, you know journalism and entertainment. But that's that's kind of the box that they're putting her in now based upon some of the things that have happened in her past. And I agree with her standing up for herself and sticking up for herself. But, you know, that's, again, that's, that's the way that they depicted her in the past. And that's something that's probably going to end up sticking with her uh, as she moves forward in journalism. I don't know if she'll be able to come out from under that. You know, it may not necessarily even be a bad thing. Um, well, it'll, it'll still be a bad thing that that's what she has to deal with, but I don't necessarily think it, it'll be detrimental to her career. No, no, She's still no, going to continue no, no. to have fantastic opportunities. And man, but it's, it's, I, I, I will say this. I do want to go back and read the rest of the article just to see what else is being said, but. Ultimately, I just think that it, she should have changed the way she said something. Definitely just taking out the white versus black school. I don't think that was the best way for her to say that. Even if, even if she would have um, disguised it as saying that more of our African-American athletes should consider going to HBCUs. HBCUs, yeah. That would have made more sense. That would have definitely made more sense. Well, speaking about the black athlete. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we can go to two two black athletes that are having uh, two very different days today. Absolutely. Um, let's, uh, let's start with A.B. Um, first word that comes to mind for me with A.B. is clown. <laughs> yeah. Right now, he is acting like a complete clown. Um. He was just released from the Raiders today after being fined um, like what, $215,000 yeah. for conduct detrimental to um, 
the uh, the Raiders. Mm-hmm. Um, he's had a very eventful offseason. First, he signed a very lucrative deal, especially for him being a 30-year-old wide receiver. So he, he got a very lucrative deal, um, and which was going to make him one of the uh, highest-paid wide receivers, especially at his age. Yes. Now, look, when, eight, when, when, when Antonio Brown is on the field, he produces. It, it, that is factual evidence. The best of our when generation. out there, that man produces. Yeah, one of, one of the best in, in, in our generation, one of the best in history. If you look at it um, at, at, in terms of numbers and the amount of time that he's done it. Uh-huh. Um, but the, the off-the-field antics that he's had, to me, is completely unacceptable. Um threatening to not play because your helmet was decommissioned and they no longer, uh, I, is it, is it that they, it's not that they no longer make the helmet, but the NFL no longer has it as a, uh, an approved helmet to wear. Yeah. It's uh, too, it's too old. It's past the, um, I think the, the, his helmet was a two, uh, 2010. And that was the last, um, yeah. helmets that they allowed is, that 2010 model that he likes. That no, no, his. I, I think his was a 2009, 2010, one of them. But whatever it is, it was right at the cusp of being accepted. But because of the year and what all has been added in the um, and the technology and the um, and the resources that are available now in terms of what you can have in your helmet, it's not allowed any longer. Yeah. It. it uh, and it's not like it's just affecting him. It's affecting quite a few people. But Tom Brady the wore the same one. Going, and didn't say a word. Yeah. <laughs> not a word. He said, yo, I'm going to get my helmet and I'm going to keep on chucking. And it is what it is. You know, it, it, he's not the only person who, who's had to make this change or make this switch. And, and I think he's just acting like a big-ass baby about it. So then he goes and he goes off on Mike Mayock. Um, who is Oakland's GM? Yep. And they had their words, and he he said some some racist and derogatory words towards him. And, and I think, man, more than anything, this dude has he's definitely a diva. You know, they say most wide receivers are divas anyway, but he just seemed like a real spoiled brat through all of this, man. And I, more more than anything, I'm disappointed because just let your play speak. You can continue to do what you do and just let your play speak. And you don't have to have all of these off-the-field antics and do all of this extra crap. I think that's the part that's, that's really uh, – that, that's, that's what annoys me the most out of this entire situation is when you play, you're good. Yeah. You're great even. The best. But – but is it at the? Should you have to deal? Would the team want to continue to have to deal with that? And as of right now, Oakland said, "Hey, I'm better off cutting my losses." Now, because of the fines that he get, he lost twenty nine million in guaranteed money. Yep, they recoup because based upon, and I don't blame him. Based based upon your behavior, you are week to week with us, <laughs> and you know yeah. NFL not guaranteed contracts, so they they play for that guaranteed money. And for him to lose that, the Raiders told this man, yo, you week to week with us. Yeah. And they got every right to. He said he feels like it was calculated by them. But that's, that's I, stupid even to if me. it was, for, for him I don't to think blame that, him. For him to think that, that's stupid. Because nothing that they've done from me watching Hard Knocks or anything else was right with A.B. Mm-hmm. That's all they've and done. And everything was avoidable. Yep. Everything, that he, everything that he did. He inflicted on himself. All of these were avoidable. You didn't have to do any of this. You know? So I, that, that's the part that pisses me off the most, man, is that all of this happened, and now it's just a, a woe with me. I blame Oakland for all of this, and, and I'm going to still come back better than ever. I don't know, dog. I mean, the, I, don't, I don't wish detriment on him, but he created his own... Demise, yeah, you're right. right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is this is definitely your, uh, you know, this is your own doing. And on the flip side of this, you have Julio Jones. Julio Jones just signed today with the Atlanta. Well, um, just got a new contract with the Atlanta Falcons, mm-hmm. and he signed three years for sixty-six million dollars, guaranteed. Sixty-four million is guaranteed. Yep. And again, we're talking about another guy who does just like AB. He gets on the field and he produces. But the thing is, is when he's off the field, you don't hear nothing about Julio Jones. Nothing. I've not heard one negative story about Julio Jones at all. This man comes in, he do his job, and he go home. He may be the closest thing to LeBron James in the NFL. Him and maybe like Russell Wilson. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. you don't hear nothing bad about this dude. When he gets on the field, he produces, he does what he's supposed to do. From what they say, he's a great teammate. And then that's it. That's, that's the only thing that you hear. And I think, he deserves every bit of this $64 million or $66 million that he's going to get. You know, so it's, it's not, again, I understand some of the mentality and the things that come along with the NFL. The NFL, by no means are they, like, the greatest when it comes to um, corporations or companies to work for. Mm-hmm. We've, seen, we've seen them screw over a many of players. And so it's not like... You know, we're too far removed from that. But on the flip side of this, when you have a guy like Antonio Brown or a guy like a, a, a Josh Gordon who continue to just spit in the face of the NFL or, you know, continue to have all of these chances and, and just, I, I guess, not utilize them or be so self-centered and so selfish in, in, in the decisions that they make, I don't feel sorry for those kind of dudes. But then, uh, but then you see a guy like uh, um, a Russell Wilson who just got paid a large sum of money and a guy like Julio Jones who get paid a large sum of money and you say, man, you know what? That's the way it's supposed to be done. Uh-huh. That's the way you go about working and getting your money and, and doing your thing. You know? So it, it's... I don't know, man. It's tough. It's tough to see the Antonio Brown... But then you love to see things like what happened with Julio Jones today and getting paid all that money. Yeah, and and through the midst of it all, he um, Julio Jones did say that he was um, unpleased with his contract. He didn't hold out. He went to practice. Right. He did all the things that a regular <laughs> employee would have to do at their job while they're negotiating or um, seeking a raise. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah. What A.B. should have done was, for one, if you didn't want to be traded to the Raiders at the beginning of the year or at the beginning of the offseason, whenever he got traded, void the trade or tell L.A., I don't intend to play for you. But that 30 kept him in the, in the door. I don't think he ever had the intentions of playing for Oakland. I mean, um, L.A. They're back to L.A., right, or they still Oakland? Well, no, they're going no, to I Vegas so. soon. Well, they're going with, for, yeah, yeah. For, for the Raiders. I don't think he had oh, intentions to play. <laughs> yeah, nothing, yeah, nothing he's shown has shown that he wanted to play for the Raiders. Nothing. Because if you, if you were that gung-ho about um, all of this stuff, m- most of the things, like you stated, were coming from left field. How was them yeah. sending you a fine letter which you've been in the league for over eight years, how you not figured you're going to get fined for not coming to practice? And for right. you to air out the dirty laundry, we wouldn't have known you've gotten fined unless you, um, if you didn't share it. Of course, it would have came out yeah. later, but you shared it. You shared the conversation with Gruden last night. Didn't no one ask for that. Right. So, so he's, I mean, he's, he's just a clown and a half, man. He's going to get another job because he's a... Um, uh, at set on the field, but you got to deal with that off yeah. the field stuff. And the way the NFL is set up now, 
and how they're not trying to give people money. I wouldn't be surprised if this man may not play until it's almost playoff time and somebody really need him. Yeah, because the I headache is not worth somebody, somebody who go down. And yeah, get an injury. the touchdowns aren't worth the headache at this point. I I don't know. I think he might he might get a job soon, but it's hard to say. Yeah, he's going to get one. I, I know he's going to he, get one. Right. Yeah, but I mean, I, I see. I was actually having this conversation with one of my homies, uh, but before we started shooting about. Um, like, how quickly do you think he's going to get another job? I say about and week five. I was on, you say week five? Week five, the latest, the I earliest, think. I would say probably, because he can't play in week one wherever he goes. Now, he can sign right. after 301 our time, 401 Eastern with any team. I said hit the earliest, maybe week three. Mm-hmm. Week three, Is the earliest, the latest, week five. Miami could use them. Mm-hmm. San Francisco could use them. So I mean, it's, it's definitely teams out there who can who can definitely utilize. Well, anybody could utilize an elite wide receiver. So it's not like it's not like a the list is short with teams who can use him. But the list may be short with the teams that want to deal with that. He can't go to a At team this, that has a young coach or a coach mm-hmm. that isn't proven. Like with Gruden, Gruden is a seasoned coach, but Gruden has become a, a caricature of himself from being on ESPN, the whole Chucky vibe and all of that stuff. So he wanted as much yeah. of the limelight as AB did. He's going to have to go somewhere where it's not any nonsense being played around or where they got an old school offensive coordinator that's going to be like, look, boy, if you want to play, this is what we do, or or GM that's hard-nosed mm-hmm. that still kind of kind of have that old school mentality that he'll respect he's not going to respect a sean mcveigh or anything like that because even though you've had success what have you really done compared to what i've done i got two super bowl you know who you just described right who no 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 he's he not going there they already got one man they got one already I'm but just it, telling you I'm but, just telling but, you but if they have described. but if they have two you know what i mean exactly and, you, and that's my that's my other squad too i wouldn't hate it if he goes to the pats i wouldn't hate it you definitely just described the New England Patriots all. So hey, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, I wouldn't hate that. That's my squad, too. Yo, Belichick, do what you got to do, man. <laughs> but wherever he goes, I, I can't really say this, but if I was the GM, I'm not signing him past a year. Do you have to get a prove it deal? I give you five oh, no. mil. Yeah, I'm, I'm signing him. Yeah, I'm signing him. Whoever, wherever he goes, I'm finding him through the rest of the year. And depending on, um, you know, how he does with the team, how he, do, how he does on the field and the locker room and all of that, then that will let me know whether or not I want to go through a re-signing and all of that. I'm but not even, I'm not even, I'm not even giving him top receiver money. So that, that, that 15 to $21 million, he's not even seeing that oh, for no. me. He's in, he, no, I, he I may can't. be generous and give him 12 to 10 range. And I guarantee yeah, it all, about, but you you're not getting mm-hmm. none past this year. We have to go back to the table. Even though even though he's elite, I'm thinking wherever he signs, he he might get eleven to thirteen million for the rest of this year. Yeah, that's that's where I'm at. That's that's probably where he ends up going. He doesn't. He's lost a lot of leverage here. He's lost a whole lot of leverage here. Then you're coming in with issues. So, we don't know if your feet's okay and, and all that. So right, yeah. It's I mean, you joined in hard to even practice. So it's, it's tough, man. It's, he put himself in a very tough situation, a very tough predicament. But we'll, we'll see how it goes with him being able to get out of this situation. Or if he can move through this situation, we'll see. But ultimately, it's, um, it's, it's going to be worth it's going to be worth watching the way that this ends up going throughout the rest of the year. This is, is going to be something worth watching for sure. It is. Well, that's all I got, bro. Yeah, man, me too. We're going we gonna to keep an eye on AB. We're going to keep an eye on uh, Mr. Trubisky slash Jay-Z and see what's going on with the, <laughs> uh, with, with the, 
with the next steps of these actionable items. Um, and man, we'll we'll see how we can uh, package up episode thirty three. Man, y'all keep rocking with us. Let us know what y'all think about AB situation. Let us know what y'all think about Jamel Hill too, and about uh, black athletes going more towards HBCUs instead of uh, more prestigious schools or, in Jamel's words, white schools. <laughs> so what can they follow us at, bro? Man, follow us on all of the platforms. It's, uh, we're on Spotify. We're on uh, YouTube. We are on Apple Podcasts. We are on uh, SoundCloud. Everything at the Wrap Up Pod. Yep, yep. That's all I got, man. That's another one, man. We're putting the bow on this. We'll highlight y'all on the next one, episode 33, man. Peace, peace. All right, that's a bow.